Well, again, so let's get started with this next micro lecture. Remember, these are intentionally short. This one's going to be on free fall. Uh, you need three bullet points worth of notes, one to two sentence summary, and your follow-up questions on Google Forms. Our objective for this one is to describe the conditions necessary for free fall, and really kind of what is free fall as well. So we're going to start off with a claim. The claim is that gravity pulls everything down at the same rate. Now, you've probably heard this before. Maybe you've heard it in different ways. Um, technically, it's gravity pulls down everything at the same rate of acceleration. But there's a problem with that, which is if I drop a rock and drop a feather, gravity clearly is pulling down the rock faster than the feather because I can see the feather hit the ground much later. So the question becomes, why is it that they don't hit the ground at the same time if, in fact, gravity pulls everything down at the same rate, as so many science teachers are prone to say? So the simple answer, and we'll get into it with this video, is that stuff like air gets in the way. What that means is, yes, gravity still pulls everything down at the same rate, but sometimes things are in the way. Like right now, I'm not falling. Gravity is not pulling me down and accelerating me. There's something in the way, my stool. And sometimes there's stuff in the way that isn't necessarily viewable, like air or water might be in the way, and it slows it down, but doesn't stop it per se. To prove this, we're actually going to watch a short video clip of a feather and a metal marble or bearing falling once with air and then once without air. So I'm going to switch over. The link for this YouTube video is down here at the bottom. Uh, you'll need to enter it in manually, but I'm going to embed this in the video or in this lecture. So this first one's going to be with the feather and the air dropping in atmospheric pressure, meaning with air. So we can see there that the marble clearly hits first. I can actually slow this down. And I'm going to replay it one more time. So we can see there that the marble hits first, and that's with air. Now this one, they've taken the air and they've pumped it out, meaning in this little jar here, they took out all the air. And they're going to repeat the same experiment. Let's see what happens. All right, so we can see in that case, the feather literally drops almost like the same speed or same uh, acceleration as the marble, or dropped like a rock is what I was going to say. And so let's slow it down and see what that looks like. And slow it down to one third speed. And so there we can see that both of them hit the ground at the same time. Sorry, there's a little bit of a lag on that. But if I go back, we can see right here that the feather is falling just as fast as the marble, maybe even a little faster. That's probably just because it was released a half second early or something. But we can see the feather drops really fast in this case, and that's because no air is in the way. So gravity gets to pull them both down at the same rate. Which brings us back to our original uh, objective, which is describing the conditions necessary for free fall. So when something is falling without being slowed down by anything else, we say it is in free fall. So this boy right now, um, probably in free fall, or really close to it. There might be a little air in the way, but the air is not affecting his motion, or in other words, how much gravity is pulling down on him, or how fast he kind of accelerates. And so what this boils down to is this idea that oftentimes we have to approximate free fall. So things are said to be in free fall if they're falling solely due to gravity. So there's no rocket attached to their back, there's no wings or things like that and that the effects of air resistance are so small they can be ignored. So there are times where the effect of air resistance or air getting in the way or something else getting in the way is small enough that it doesn't really have an effect. But there are times where it does, such as with a feather. So some examples. A falling rock, just from like out of a building or something like that, small building, about free fall. Not exactly, but it's close enough. Uh, cliff diver, pretty close to free fall. Again, it's not exactly free fall, but it's close enough that we're going to say it is. A falling feather, not free fall. Clearly, air is slowing it down. Um, there are things that, you know, look like they're in free fall, but are a little bit slower, such as maybe if you dropped a crumpled piece of paper, it gets pulled down pretty fast, but not as fast as you might normally think. So there are times where free fall is a good approximation and times where it isn't. That's it for this one. It's a little bit of a longer one. Three bullet points worth of notes, one to two sentence summary, and do your follow-up questions on Google Forms.